two packages arrived today. Uh, before we get to that non-anime stuff, basically, uh, first two seasons of The Simpsons, complete Seinfeld, complete The Twilight Zone, and then uh, three movies: The Sandlot, Daddy Chat, The Boy in Striped Pajamas. Yeah, just basically getting those out of the way. So let's um, these, the story of those is uh, you know, before we watch the movie in the movie theater, sometimes there's a lot of extra time, and hmm, I like that I can do that. But I do like that I can receive that. I think this is about right. Anyways, sometimes we just hang out at Best Buy, and some of that stuff was really cheap. It's things I've been wanting to get. But now the anime. Durara 2, Volume 6, DVD and Blu-ray versions. Let's get them out of the plastic. There it is. There it is. Let's see. I guess we'll take a peek at the full artwork, although we're mostly not seeing. Well, no, there's some. A little city in the background. I'm going to guess part of um, Celtie's head, I think. Is there any? Hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> let's see. We've got a little booklet. I think, I think I can't flip pages. It's a little too dry out possibly but we've got the issues we've got some postcards which lazily not doing questionnaire proof of purchase for DVD version and then we've got the DVD well, it looks like there's six episodes and a bonus episode two discs kind of following Dura's coloring convention I guess Maybe graphical design convention is a more accurate term. Uh, we've got the uh, two Blu-ray version. Internal contents are mostly the same, right? Booklet, the postcards, proof of purchase, the questionnaire. Hmm. And then Blu-ray version looks very similar on the inside. 19.5 do foo foo foo. Hmm. We got Fairy Tale uh, Volume 22 DVD Blu ray version. It's nice this keeps coming out. Region A only, audio, English dub. If they ever stopped English dubbing it, I think that'd probably be a pretty bad sign. Oh, here's the full front. We got two DVD discs, two Blu-ray discs. I'm kind of guessing. Yeah, that's the Blu-ray symbol right there. Hmm. Is that CGI or picture? Can't tell too well. It's interesting. Oh well. Next up, uh, Watt V Season Eight Voyage Five. Kind of looking forward to this because the previous DVD got it kind of eh, arc out of the way. You know, it's it could be nice. Some people probably actually like it. It's not main story, I guess. Which is why I'm looking forward to maybe here. Feels a little looser. Discs one and two. Discs one and two. So. It's more One Piece. Rampa Keton Game of Laplace. I think this one's actually going to be what I fire up next. Look, that's regions A and B, although that A is a little bloodstained. The audio is, um, you know, it's English dubbed. I guess I'm kind of curious because... Well, this is something I've noticed with some other DVDs where sometimes you have a somewhat androgynous character. 
but the fact that they show off the butt usually means that they're a girl anyways. Anime which don't do that are actually kind of respectable, but... Yeah. And I don't remember what it was about, but I do remember seeing an advertisement and being kind of curious. Like, and because it's dubbed, it means I can fire it up. With the Pokemon and stuff in the background. It's a can. Interesting. Graphic design. Looks like the DVDs and the Blu-rays look the same, although that's got the Blu-ray symbol on it. Blu-ray symbol, DVD, and of course the text itself is going to be generally different. Okay. Uh, here's um, Love Chinibio and Other Delusions uh, Heartthrob. This would be the Blu-ray DVD limited edition version, because I think what was out before was just the Blu-ray or subtitled DVD. I don't remember. Whatever I watched. Maybe it was dubbed. But it wasn't this. And I don't think I got it on Blu-ray. Yeah, it's hard to remember. All I know is I was definitely going to get this. And actually, it's nice and shiny like the uh, first one. Hmm. It's a little squished there, which is unfortunate. But I'm okay with that. Let's see. It says Blu-ray and two discs. It looks like two discs to me. So... Imagery. And, yeah, that says DVD up there, so it could be uh, three discs. Huh. This is not in the. Okay, none, none of these discs share art. Actually, I really like this one. Although, I'm not sure if I'm looking at it right. I guess that kind of makes it interesting. Why swimsuits? Is there a swimsuit episode? Hmm. I can't remember. Let's see. We've got the Mabi No Gion, which I do recall. That's a bit of relevance to the series itself. Which I don't think it's like a spoiler to say it, but I can't remember. So I'm not going to. It's a little squished, but let's uh, take a quick peek what's in here. So it's interesting, this looks like it's a pin thing, except there's no pin mechanism. So maybe it's not supposed to be a pin. Maybe it's supposed to be something else. The head and the body are not connected. It does appear to be a bone strap or something like that. I see a heart sticker. Oh, I see, because she has the little heart mark thing on her. Looks like we've got some color card things and a poster. Okay, that won't tilt it up. Come on. Not that there's anything about this that's super spectacular. It's a great poster. Just not the sort of thing where you should probably stop your day to make sure you get a chance to see it or something. I don't know. Uh, let's go back down here because we've got some postcards. And feels like that's empty, so that's. All the things that came with this special limited edition thing. Now, I put it all back together for no reason other than putting it all back together. 
Next up, we've got Angelic Layer on Blu-ray. This is a great one. Maybe this will be a good excuse to rewatch it. Hmm. I'm pretty sure there was a DVD release that came with this every release, but um, I already have this on DVD. An old 80 vid release, if I'm not mistaken. But. And last but not least, we have Season 2 of Hakuoki on Blu ray. I do believe it only got the DVD release before, and. This plastic feels like it's extra. There we go. Don't fall down. I don't want to go chasing after it. Donk. Hmm. Okay, let's see. First of all, back. English dubbed? Is this series English dubbed? Hmm. Two discs. Pretty straightforward. I haven't watched any of it, so I can't remember based on that. Oh well. This is uh, this week's anime DVD collection update. <sighs> okay, let's see. Uh, recount. I think I talked about a little bit about it last time. Like I started watching it. it feels like it took a little while to finish it don't entirely remember why. All I know is it was kind of... What, what's the word I was wanting to use? It, it's not particularly engaging, I suppose. It's not necessarily horrible by any stretch of the imagination, but I guess um, it kind of felt like it was lacking in conflict or really in the humor department. It's just kind of going through motions, sort of. So there's some neat and funny, amusing things that do come up, but it also feels like most of the time this show doesn't have much other than what it initially introduced, which is kind of a weird thing to think about because, um, you know, I'm not thinking that I could necessarily do any better, but there are shows out there which are definitely stay fresh throughout the whole show and run longer than this. And you may think I'm talking about Gintama, but actually I haven't seen enough Gintama to say for certain um, the quality of the watching of it. Speaking of quality watching, uh, Bikini Warriors. Now, the word I would actually use to describe this anime is cute. Um, and I, by that I mean the way that sometimes people mean it when it's kind of derisive or um, sarcastic, as opposed to saying that, oh, it's attractive or anything like that. Basically, um, There's not a whole lot to it. It's got thin slivers of amusement to it. it. It has like an amusing idea per little episode. The episodes are small. All 12 of them are together are 48 minutes on this thing. Um, but the problem, I guess, is a lot of those things have been done better in other mediums, especially a lot of web comics. And <clears throat> it tends to go a little further than it really needs to for the joke because it's trying to... I guess padded or trying to just be very fan servicey. I think a really good example is um, they're doing a bunch. Actually, I guess it was a fighter who was mostly doing a lot of work, um, <clears throat> odd jobs to as a kind of a side quest sort of thing. And one of them involved catching a dog, which is kind of more of a stereotype in um, anime. You know. You, Here's our main character, super powerful, awesome, and they have to go catch a cat or a dog that somebody lost because nobody respects their abilities. You know, that's a common theme more in animation than it is in um, this. So that's probably a less great example of a joke, which is probably why I'm willing to kind of mention up that very brief one. But the example of them going too far as a dog, turning around, pouncing on her, okay. And... Then it just starts licking her, and they decide to move it into more and more uh, sexual positions, I guess. Like, it begins very, oh, it's not very sexual, and it's licking uh, some more erogenous than the breasts, than the crotch. It, and 
that's a really good example. The joke kind of goes a little further than you care about for the sake of the joke, and so it's like the show kind of thinks it only has that going for it, so it's kind of hard to respect the other jokes that do happen, and some of those fall flat because of this desire. Like, I guess I don't want to make too many examples because there's not much to it. And I'm guessing, that said, based on its rating, I didn't find it to be that unwatchable. So, I'm guessing it's just more... Very few people find this fulfilling to watch, period. But it feels like it's a lot easier to watch than a lot of other things that people have um, watched or something. Huh. And that's actually all the anime I've watched. Um, I'm trying to think where all the other time might have gone. I know... Huh. Well, I must have been watching something else that I can't think of. And it wasn't necessarily anime. I guess I did watch... Um, Last weekend, this week, all of a uh, hack sign with a friend. It's a great watch. It's definitely got its flaws, but you know, I really appreciate it just because it's an exploration into why people are kind of get lost in games. I guess you know, it, it's an escape for reality in a, diff a bunch of different ways for a bunch of different people. But our main character is literally stuck in the game and. I don't know. I like it because, you know, that story arc is kind of covered, even though Hack Sign is pro part of the big Project Dot Hack. It tells its own little story while, um, which is interweaved with the overall main story. So you can feel like you actually got something done by having watched it, you know, because you completed a story arc. And at the same time, become interested in what's going to be happening afterwards um, because it's a setup for the games. This is in contrast to Hack Roots, which. I think they maybe tried to have more action in there because that was tended to be the criticism people had at Hack Sign or late at Hack Sign. But you know, it's kind of a removing of action of um, story to create action sort of thing. Maybe I don't know. I guess the problem with Hack Roots was that the the main character is also the main character of the games. The place he ends at at that series is the same place he was at the beginning, so it doesn't feel like anything really happened. And the entire idea behind Hack Roots and GU is, oh, well, all those mysteries you knew before, well, there was a server fire. How much of the original mysteries exist? And that's a kind of generally weak premise, I would say. It doesn't feel like it really brings anything new to the table and doesn't really tie up any loose ends that were left in the first story arc, major story arc, I guess. So, you know, I'm not saying that Hack Roots is necessarily bad, but it is no Hack Sign. Also, it doesn't have as great music Hack Sign as some wonderfully spectacular music. <sighs> but outside of that, uh, there must have been other stuff of some sort. I know that uh, I went with a friend to watch um, Fantastical Beasts and where they reside or something. I don't remember that sub the subtitle. And I thought it was actually a pretty good movie. I was expecting it to be worse than it was because it's not rating particularly high. And I'm having trouble telling why. I know for me it wasn't a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination. Because, you know, for example, the way it ended, it felt like it was trying a little too hard to tie up some loose ends. Like, it kind of reminds me of the pacing at the end of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, but that one was m more... I don't know. I'm trying to think how to best describe all of it, but I'm also losing track of thoughts. It's stuff. But, you know, that didn't exactly ruin it for me. I didn't feel like it was... something. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Obviously, since I bought some stuff here, I did watch a little The Twilight Zone, and it is still good, still classic. Uh, I think uh, Pitch for the Angel's Death is kind of stupid a little bit, but not in a way that ruins it. Watched an episode of Seinfeld. I intend to watch more of that. I mean, it's one of those shows where, since I don't have cable or 
I don't do broadcast television. I kind of don't get to pick up reruns of, of some stuff, and random episodes of Seinfeld are kind of great in that regard. So I'm wondering if I should just, like, Twilight Zone, Seinfeld, watch random episodes. Actually, Simpsons would be similar, wouldn't it? Now, I haven't watched much of it, just two episodes from season two. Basically, uh, Treehouse of Horrors and the one that came after it, which is a uh, car in every garage and three eyes, no, maybe two cars in every garage and three eyes in every fridge. Tuh, I can't speak. <clears throat> Mouth's a little dry. Well, it's one where Montgomery Burns runs for governor. Um, and I have to say, watching it, I forgot just how neat old, system, old Simpsons were and how they really ruined some of the characters by going with stereotypes. I think um, Marge and Lisa have probably suffered the most. Like, they're very, they seem a lot more down to earth, less naggy than they do in the modern Simpsons stuff that I've watched, which admittedly has probably been like a year or so, so maybe I'm not sampling enough. But what do you do when you're a cartoon that has been running for 30 years? Has it been 30 years? Maybe it's shorter. It's been a long time. So, that's one of the reasons, basically, um, they were for sale, on sale, and um, since it was the first two seasons, I'm like, you know, that's some classic Simpsons. I would like to go and rewatch some of that. Maybe for Christmas I should watch uh, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire or something, whatever that first episode of the first season is, which is a Christmas special. And things to think about. Oh well, uh, beyond that, obviously I've continued to play Pokemon. Um, I don't remember where I was last week. Where I am right now is I've beaten Pokemon Sun. I basically trained up Pokemon to do it and the Elite Four are a solved problem but I'm trying to make them a slightly more solved problem because there's a little feedback loop going on between the two games which is how the beginning of Pokemon projects tends to be. But basically, um, <clears throat> I've managed to create a modest Starmie and a modest Gengar with uh, 31 IVs and special attack and speed, which were the only things I'm looking for. Um, the Starmie is to kind of improve, improve my footing a little bit in the battle uh, tree, although it's not going to be my ultimate team, you know, it will probably be useful for getting that first 20 win. But I don't know what else it's going to be partnered up with, especially since... Chance C is going to be harder to do without Mawile because Mawile is how you egg move breed um, seismic toss onto Chance C and um, give it a little oomph. So maybe I have to consider some alternative plan. I haven't figured out yet. But I'm not too worried about that yet. Gengar's purpose is to kind of replace um, Rebombi for Elite Four runs because. Gengar's got some good oomph to him as well, and <clears throat> he's immune to fake out. So now, granted, Rubombi is immune to the effects of fake out and has more than enough health to handle. It's just you know needing to make sure stuff. Anyways, <clears throat> that's the plan on the one game and on Pokemon Sun. I'm not exactly going and collecting all the Pokemon that are unique to Sun just yet, and there's plenty in Moon I haven't caught. But since I'm doing so much Elite Four stuff, I am evolving Pokemon as I go to um, make it so. But my main goal in Pokemon Sun at the moment is actually collecting Dittos. And on that, for that, I've taken the uh, event Munchlax, which has a uh, holdback, and I made sure to evolve it before it was 20 so that I could have it learn Yawn at 20 before, um, without hard scale stuff. You know, that makes it a really good catching Pokemon. And for Dittos, I have it, um, it I gave it Tackle and a Substitute. I max PP'd the Tackle and the holdback. So it has 56 PP and Tackle, and because it's level 100, it can kill these wild dittos in one hit and so the goal here is um, I encounter a ditto I throw up a substitute so it can't transform into me so its stats stay weak um, then I use an adrenaline ball was it? 
I use the adrenaline thing. And then I uh, hold back and keep using adrenaline ball to use up turns while the ditto summons another ditto. Every time a ditto summons another one, I kill the old one because transform only has 10 PP, so you want to make sure you're always calling more dittos with the freshest ditto. <clears throat> and of course you kill the old one first because you want to make sure the new one has a chance to potentially summon a new one. It can happen. And the idea there is because I have 56 PP in tackle, Snorlax, Snorlax is able to single-handedly get me 50 Pokemon deep into the SOS chain. So I've caught four dittos so far this way. The fourth one was shiny. Was it four? Yes, it was four. And this, this is why in the other game I did the Starmie and the Gengar, because every time I've caught a Ditto this way, it's had four IVs. You know, four perfect IVs, I mean. And one of them was a Modest, which uh, had a Speed, Special Attack, Special Defense, and Defense. And I think the HP was really damn high. Attack was kind of low. That's almost the most ideal you can get for a Modest, you know? So that means I have a really good Modest Ditto for breeding Modest Pokemon. So if I... I, there's a couple of others I have in mind, I guess, that I could train up with it, but for the time being, <clears throat> I have that, and I've done that, and that's that, and that's that did it went over to start up that project, but I still need to catch those. It takes a while to get 50 deep, and once you get 50 deep, you, you know, you still have six tackles left in case you need to do a little more juggling, just in case. But of course, every time a shiny is going to come up, I think I'm going to catch it. And this one showed up. 40 something in or maybe it was just the high 30s and still had four IVs but unfortunately it was impish which I think um, boosts I don't know it's supposed to be a good four attack but the attack is one of the IVs not missing or something like that so I've still got um, it's probably not going to be my final impish ditto if I get another one that actually has IVs in the right place. But, you know, that's the goal here is to just slowly accumulate dittos. And every one I get is probably going to be closer to relevant than the vast majority of the dittos I've gotten in the past. And every time I get one that has a nature that I definitely want to work with, I'm going to work with. So I have one that is a candidate in that regard. It is Calm, and I think the, uh, it has... HP, defense, special defense, and speed, and the special attack is ridiculously high. So it is really good. And by ridiculously high, I mean it looks like it's a 28 or 29. Can't really tell. The IV checking in this game is obviously not exact. They've made it non exact for a long time, but it is spectacular. I love it. If you're wondering how to unlock it, basically you just need to make sure once you get to the guy that sounds like he's an IV checker. He doesn't respond to you immediately, and he won't respond to you until you've hatched a total of 20 or more eggs or something like that, which isn't that hard to do. Both games did it, so both games can check the IVs. Uh, and one of them finally has a... Uh, and the Pokemon Sun finally got it, a 50 Pokemon in the Pokedex, so now Moon has two lucky eggs. Uh, but, <clears throat> I don't know, that's a lot of maybe not too important pokemon -y stuff, but maybe good to know. Um, so that's basically the plan right now is to get some Pokemon leveled up to um, I'm, I'm having my Pokemon going out and hunting for evolutionary stones. Um, once I reach a point where I kind of have a good grasp on what Pokemon I might want to design and if I have the dittos for it I may just go and do that because I think there's value <clears throat> in having at least an initial IV trained team. Although maybe I want to make sure I can take on the battle tower first. Which could be tricky. Because some of the things I would want in order to take on the battle tower you get from the battle tower like uh, Mega Evolution Stones. So if I were to try to take advantage of Mega Evolution stuff I would probably have to do um, the one, I guess I don't want to say it in case you're playing, but there's one that uh, you are given in gameplay. But if I want more... I don't know. You have to decide on a Mega Evolution and a Z-Move, I'm sure. That can be tricky. Oh well. I guess um, I'm at the point where I'm rambling a little bit. That means I should probably end it. So y'all, 
Have a nice week.